acclaimed linguist and award-winning author John McWhorter. His latest book, Woke Racism, How a New Religion Has Betrayed Black America, it argues that today's anti-racism is hurting black communities and weakening American society. John, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Now, you've said that you see wokeness as akin to a religious doctrine, and you call its followers the elect. Explain what you mean. Well, what I mean is not that it's wrong to be awakened to oppressive realities, which is what woke meant about 10 minutes ago. But I mean, there's a certain kind of woke person who feels that it's their job to get people fired and to make people cry and to call people names and to call people white supremacists if they disagree with a very narrow, punitive way of looking at how race works. And I think that what's really going on is that all of us are so scared of being called a racist on social media that we pretend to agree with these people. And if this goes on much longer, these people's way of looking at things is going to be the way everything works. And I don't think that's what any of us want, except that sliver of what I call the elect. They think they're anointed. And you write that America is now obsessed with discussing and acknowledging racism. But do you think that for too long we didn't talk about racism enough and that this country hadn't fully come to terms with our dark history, perhaps even still has not? You know, honestly, with all due respect, I don't know what that means. I would understand what that meant if it was 1960. But I'm not sure what we mean by coming to terms. I think that, you know, long before June 2020, this is a country that talked about race and racism all the time. This is a country that had affirmative action and scholarships and black people penetrating the national fabric ever more every few years. I think there are many great things to say. There is a roughly third of the black community who really need real help. And I don't mean just help themselves. I mean, we need intelligent programs to help people to have better lives. But the idea that we hadn't paid enough attention until roughly June of 2020, with all due respect, I think that's something we're taught to say. And so you feel that we've had enough um, in history books, for example, that we've had enough acknowledgments um, just as far as the past uh, struggles were concerned? Yes. And I know that seems like I'm trying to be contrarian, but I think that we got past that. Now, if you asked in 1985 what the history books were like, well, then, yeah, I think there needed to be some work done. But in 2020, the idea that history books were mostly in denial about slavery and racism, I just don't see it. Well, you know, I think the, the, the playing devil's advocate here, I've heard a lot of conversations about the legacy of slavery, right, uh, when it comes to medical attention, when it comes to education, when it comes to um, pretty much, you name it, access to entrepreneurship in, in this country. And so I think that in some segments, that is the concern of, of what has not been addressed, of what has not been dealt with, is those legacies that continue to plague the black community. Would you disagree with that? No, there are those legacies, and they do need to be battled. But this is the problem. If there are fewer black people than white people in a certain profession, the question is, is it racism that created it in any sense that any of us know racism to be and that can be fought now? So, yeah, there do need to be more black doctors, without a doubt. But is the reason that there aren't black doctors a racism that we can fight as opposed to something that went on in the past, where fixing it now is going to be something other than battling racism. I'm very curious, your take on critical race theory, such a flashpoint right now. Uh, why do you think that it can be problematic to teach children about the role of race and racism in our society? It is not problematic to teach kids about the role of racism in society. I have no problem with that. I have a problem with where it goes overboard, where a certain kind of teacher decides that they need to teach white kids that they are potential oppressors and black kids that they need to beware being oppressed by whites and taking white kids and black kids and putting them in different parts of the class and having the whole curriculum be centered on the idea that racism needs to be battled. That's the problem. That's what a lot of parents are worried about. Now, there are some people who would like racism and slavery not to be taught in school. However, I don't think that's the majority of people who are involved in this debate. What somebody like me is worried about is when school becomes all about overturning power differentials, because even though you'd like to overturn them, that's one of about 100 things that school might be about. There are a lot of people saying that that should be the main thing kids are taught, because I think that kids should be taught early on to be good little leftist radicals. And I don't mean radical as a slur. But still, I don't think that schools should be teaching politics. And do you feel that racism is systemic in this country? 
I don't know what that question means. There are disparities between white people and black people that are conditioned often by definite racism in the past and sometimes subtle racism now. But the answer to those questions, how you get past those things, is not always to look for something in the system that is biased against black people and eliminate it. I wish it were that easy, but it isn't. And that's why these things are hard. We're being taught that all of it is very simple and that it's all about just teaching white people that they're bad. I'm not sure how that helps poor black people who need help with their real lives. You certainly have a lot to say about today's cancel culture that you feel that it's gone too far. Do you think that in the past few decades we've allowed too much I don't know if I want to ask it this way, because I, I know that you don't necessarily, I don't know that you would classify it this way, but have we allowed too much overt racism? You mean in the past few decades? Yes. Depends on what, depends on what the episode is, but I think that over the past two years, it's become fashionable to chase people out of their jobs for something that nobody would have considered racism even 10 minutes ago. So no, I don't think that what's been going on since roughly June of 2020 is just giving white men their just desserts. That happens sometimes, but the reason somebody writes a book like mine is when you're watching people getting fired and yelled at and castigated left and right for things that really simply aren't wrong under any conception of these sorts of things, where somebody needs to blow the whistle and say, this is getting exaggerated, this is becoming Salem, and I think that it needs to stop because there are people who need help while a lot of us stand by virtue signaling, and it really worries me. John McWhorter, uh, Woke Racism, How a New Religion Has Betrayed Black America. It is available now wherever books are sold. We thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.